GDQ, welcome back to Awesome Games Done Quick 2022 online, powered by Twitch. My name is Super Jamoose. I'm here for the next five runs, continuing on the classic Nest block. Starting up here, we have the double header with KLM 1187. We're starting off with Power Rangers, Kyoru Sentai Zio Ranger. When you're ready to go, let's get after it. All right, thanks so much, Moose. Uh, again, I am KLM1187. Uh, I will be performing the next couple of runs here. Uh, with me for this game, I have uh, my commentator, a uh, good pal of mine, uh, Apollo. Apollo, you can say Hello, hi. everyone. Good morning. Ready to go. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this will be uh, this. This one's gonna be super fast. Um, hopefully, <laughs> you know, since that's the point. But it's a really short game, so we're gonna <clears throat> get into it now. Um, so I'm gonna need to advance to the next screen here, and time will start here in uh, three, two, one. Go. Okay, let's go. So what we have here is uh, one of the two Power Ranger games for the Nintendo, actually Famicom, and it's actually a Kyoru Sentai Zero Ranger, which is the Japanese show that the Power Rangers that I know I know and love grew up on. And so because of that, the characters are a little bit different. So we're playing now as a boy instead of Trini. And these early stages are actually kind of more spooky than the rest of the game. So you're going to see KLM be doing a bunch of these uh, weird movement attacks. There's a lot of sliding to keep your momentum going, a um, bunch of jumping, moving forward, attacking as you're landing and attacking as you're jumping. Again, they keep moving forward. Um, and so what we want to do is make sure we take as little damage as possible because game overing in this is pretty scary. Uh, and we want to keep those lives for later in the run. Uh, so we're going to try to take as little damage as possible so that we can kind of squeeze in some time later in the runs with some deaths. Uh, so in this... Yeah, game over is actually... Uh, there's no continue, so that would just be... Yeah, so KLM, KLM is not going <laughs> to let that happen. Uh, so, so what we have here is this first boss. The, the hits register really weird. Um, so we're going to be trying to hit the boss right as he appears. And if you see at any point oh. that KLM hits the boss more than once um, before he disappears, that's, I mean, that's the reason KLM is on the stage right now. So, we got yeah, that, any, any time, that's just precise timing by KLM. That's another two. And so we got one more hit. Mm. And there we go. Yeah, not the greatest fight yeah. there, but we got a couple in there anyway. No, that was that was a good boss fight. I mean, that 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 is one of the toughest parts of the entire run. Um, I gotta remember to push B here, sorry. Yeah, so what you have here in the middle of these uh, okay. stages, you got this text, and of course we're gonna skip it just to, you know, we're saving some time, but there's actually mini-games um, in this in this stage. There's uh, there's like trivia, there's some Pong, which, you know, I, I, I everyone should go out, try it, and, and play the mini-games, but you can actually lose your lives in the game with these mini-games, uh, so we're not, we're not gonna let that happen. Um, so stage two is probably the toughest platforming stage. There's a bunch of precise timing that KLM's going to be doing. Uh, we're playing here as May instead of Kimberly. Um, so you need to jump over lava. We're avoiding the potaboos, and uh, we're just making sure to take as little damage as possible. Uh, again, once you get like halfway through the stages, you go through these little doors, and the wizard here, Barza, gives you a special weapon. Um, in this, it's a bow and arrow, which probably is the best weapon in the whole game. I think KLM would agree. Yeah, it's definitely just, yeah, just keep yeah. it the whole game. It's so satisfying. It's sick. Um, so we have a few more enemies that he's going to get by here, and then we'll be coming up on the boss door. And so the boss here is, uh, you're fighting on these falling platforms, so again, we're just kind of timing the shots in order for KLM to, uh, kind of get, get a combo going here. Okay. Ooh, yeah, nice kill. That's scary. <laughs> Yeah, it, that's what I said in the interview. Uh, I wish the second half of the stages were longer just because the special weapons are really fun to use. Yeah, that, that would be really nice. The weapons the weapons are super satisfying, <laughs> as you said in the, the interview just before this. So um, so now, now that stage two is done, honestly, I think KLM can relax a little bit more. I think I can speak on his behalf and say, like, we're both very <laughs> happy and relieved that the two stages are done. Um, and Kalen can kind of focus more on like the fancy uh, movement as opposed to uh, just trying to survive. Uh, so again, we're halfway through. It's going to be grabbing the weapon, and we're playing stage here. Um, instead of Billy, we're actually playing as uh, oh. Don here. And you're still going to see the same sort of like you know kneeling when you attack to keep momentum going forward, um, and also just you know trying to cut corners when possible to get through the stage. Yeah, there's a thing I did there when coming out of that door is where if uh, you're, the sprite is huge, as you can tell, so sometimes you'll hit a ceiling. If you actually attack while you're jumping into a ceiling, you'll actually avoid the ceiling, so there too, I was able to do a little, uh, 
kind of a little skip there, make it a little faster. Yeah, and so for the, for the most part, we have our final climb coming to the boss here in the third stage. Uh, you know, I'm just hitting all these platforms perfectly. A couple more enemies, and then we're going to be going on to, to honestly probably the easiest boss of the game is Count Dracula. All Kalem kind of has to do is uh, attack him as soon as he appears, and he won't even get a chance to attack. So he just kind of he pops up in three different locations. Yeah, they're set where he pops up, so I know exactly where he's going to go. Kalem okay, just predicts predicts the movement. It's too good. Yeah. And there we go, and we're we're already more than halfway through this game. So now, um, coming on the stage four, uh, I know for me it's my personal favorite ranger, the Black Ranger. Same. So there we go. See, this is this is why we're together doing this. So he knew, he knew. Um, so yeah, so stage four, um, while you're for the most part going to be kind of just moving to the right, um, there's still a bunch of jumps you have to make. As you can see, we're kind of floating in the sky, so any, any sort of jump that Kayla misses can be falling to his death. Um, yeah, this whole stage is just one big jump. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is still, it's still pretty spooky. Um, and you're still going to see the same movement tech that Kayla does where, you know, there's the, the kneeling as the attacks in order to kind of save some, uh, save some time. And also, we're gonna about to uh, go in the store to get the special weapon, which is the axe, which is awesome. Unfortunately, uh, we can only kind of kill one enemy with it before <laughs> yeah, we get to the end of the stage. Uh, it's worth mentioning too, that there's a fixed jump height in this game as well. So you, you know, every time you push the jump button, you get the same jump height. So that's why like something like here looks a little weird. But yeah, so here at the boss Goldar, so the best thing, you know what? Get up close and personal, and just start swinging away. Okay, good. Nice. Finished it with one one HP. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> you do want to have at least one extra life going into the last level, because there is a good chance to die in the last boss. Yes. Um, and speaking of the last boss, so this is the final stage. We're going to play as the yeah, Red right Ranger. Yeah. And after 10,000 years, Rita Repulsa has come <laughs> to GDQ. Um, actually, in this version, uh, in Z Ranger, it's Witch Bandora. Oh. Um, so we're gonna play as the Red Ranger, and you're gonna you're gonna see KLM find these like hidden platforms that kind of changes the level of the stage that he's progressing on. And then right after the door, where he's gonna get a sword, um, there's these weird switches that he has to hit, and it kind of opens up pathways in order to go forward. Um, and so in the final boss, there's like tiles that fall from the ceiling. There's projectiles that come out. So KLM again is gonna kind of get up close and personal to try and avoid it. And uh, the time on the boss is actually going to be when the health is depleted. And so I'm just going to let KLM kind of concentrate as we go down this final moving platform and we'll be coming up on the final boss. That's one of the easier stages, honestly. Uh, the first two stages are really the difficult. Yeah, like what Paul said earlier, after you get past those first two stages, it's pretty. All right, I missed it there. You can get uh, her in kind of like a stun lock here. Time will be on the last bit here. And that's like... Nice. Awesome. Somehow I had zero HP there too, and I didn't actually die, so... <laughs> we avoided the, the death there too. <laughs> that was... that was actually... that was, that was an awesome run. <clears throat> well done, well done. Yeah, the, the sweet victory music here. Um, so yeah, uh, it's a super, super fast run. Um, there's a there's a dedicated speedrun Discord for the like the Super Sentai series of games. Uh, so if anyone's ever interested in running this one or any of the other games, um, you can find them on speedrun.com. Um, I, I made a speedrun tutorial for this game. Um, so that if, you, if anyone's interested in picking this one up, looking for something quick to learn, uh, I definitely recommend it. It's super a lot of fun. Um, uh, speaking of which, thanks to uh, Angel Undead for helping us learn this game when uh, a, a few of us picked this up. Um, Honestly, right when the submissions opened up, so I'm really glad it got accepted and I was able to show this off today. Um, thanks to Apollo too for joining me in the commentary. Apollo actually has a better time than me. In this no, game, we didn't. So, no one uh, had to say. No one uh, easily been. But yeah, thank you. Thank you for letting me be on here. This was awesome to just watch you. Yeah, so if you want to go ahead and so. yeah, if you want to go ahead and plug yourself really quick before we uh, move on. Yeah, to the sure. Next Why not? We got uh, Apollo two 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 three seven. Find me on Twitch. I speed run. Me and KLM and I run a lot of the same games together against each other. And uh, like like all of you, I'm gonna be sitting standing around uh, watching more of the KLM block. And uh, Bucky O'Hare's coming yeah, up. And, uh, and also, Apollo has the best New Year's Eve party on Twitch. So make sure <laughs> next end of this year you tune in as well. 
<laughs> I'll be waiting. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. Uh, thanks, everyone. Um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll see you guys uh, in just a little bit. Here. Whoa, that was fast. Welcome back, folks, to AGDQ 2022 Online. Now, we're just taking a moment to switch games here. We need to, you know, blow the dust out of the cartridges, toggle the switches, jiggle the wires, the back of the nest, that sort of thing. So, for the moment, take a stretch... Maybe get some water, grab your cat, grab your couch, whatever you need to do. Don't you worry. KLM will be back with Bucky O'Hare before you know it. And before we get in to the next run, let's shine just a little light on you, you lovely folks, and your donations that I have here. $20 coming in from Tomato Walrus that says, Nothing beats waking up to games done quick. $25 from Dano. Lost my wife to cancer last year, and no one should have to go through something like that. Here is the great runners doing something amazing to make the world a better place. And a huge shout out to GDQ staff. I cannot put in words how much it means to me what you guys are doing. Thank you. And thank you for your donation. Lady of Darkness sends in $50 and says... Been a couple years since I've been able to donate, but I finally have a bit of money I can spare doing AGDQ again. This community makes me proud to call myself a gamer, and whenever someone asks why, I merely point them to this. $250 coming in from Anonymous. I rarely get a chance to watch GDQ live, but I love watching the VODs after the event. Thank you for so consistently putting on such an awesome event for a great cause. And if you read this one out loud, hello, future me. I like that one. $100 from Cabbage. GDQ continues to astound me since the day I first found it so many years ago. I cannot thank you enough for everything you do and for such great causes. To the runners, the volunteers, the hosts, the staff, the audience, let's make this an AGDQ to remember. $30 from Nanobytes. Tomorrow is my birthday. Happy birthday. Tomorrow is my birthday. And the best gift ever would be to see AGDQ hit 500k raise for PCF before the day starts. Giving $5 for every year my husband has been cancer free. That's six years cancer free. Congratulations and thank you so much. Piano Man JB sends in $50 and says, Take my money. Love you guys. $270 coming in from T that simply says, Thank you, GDQ, less than three. Sirdan 1987 sends in $20 and says, What's this? It's already Tuesday. So many good runs have already taken place. Horror Block is going to be fun to watch later today when the time comes. I have $25 coming in from Paladin. This event saved me years ago and saves so many others. Thank you to all the runners, and thank you to PCF. Keep up the good work.